Galloway and by the Labour MP Eric Joyce. George Galloway, first of all, when you told Iraqis to resist British troops, you must have known that would have been unacceptable to the Labour Party. It would be better if you got that right. I have got uh, it right. No, you've, got not got, you've obviously not got the transcript. I, I have. have never asked Iraqis to resist British troops. You see, just as Mr Blair took the country to war based on a lie, and the media uh, uh, marched along behind them based on a lie, I have never called on anybody to harm British troops. I'm trying to get British troops out of Iraq so nobody can harm them. I said resist. This is a, from the transcript from Leslie Rose show. Are you actually telling them Iraqis to resist? Of course I am. Any foreign country which is invaded illegally by foreigners has the right to, will and should defend themselves. That's an entirely different thing from what you just alleged and what the Labour Party expelled me for. They said that I called, and you repeated it today, tonight, that I called on British forces to disobey orders. I didn't. I called on them to disobey illegal orders. That's their obligation under international law. We should get these things right. Eric Joyce, is it better to have George Galloway in the party or out of the party? Out. George unquestionably and disgracefully called on foreign mercenaries or whatever they might be called to fight with British troops. There's no question about that. He's now backpedalling in the extreme. The idea that he called on people to disobey illegal orders is just ridiculous. No British soldier would no knowingly uh, obey an illegal command. He called on foreign troops to attack British troops it was a disgrace. That You're a disgrace, a lie. George. Show me simply, where. Show me where I did that. Where did I do Let that? Us watch where Abu did Dhabi. I do that? Let us watch the real Where did I do that? Abu Dhabi. And on the Leslie Riddick programme, which has just been quoted, it's absolutely clear Listen. what your intention was. You play with words, George, in a way you think the British yeah. public is stupid, but guess what? They're not stupid. And you're quite well, simply yeah. a disgrace for calling on foreign troops to, attra to attack. British troops. Your concern you see, for British soldiers has never been evident over the years. May I get a word I in it? I was going to say, Georgia, can you absolutely clarify this point? Did you There's no need to clarify. Not? It's no, in the do. transcript. It's, it's exactly. There's a transcript in front of the Labour Party today on which they expelled me. In their own transcript, it's clear that I did absolutely nothing of the kind. Now, I wish you had the transcript of what I, I was expelled. That's a Leslie Riddock show from last year. Excellent. I was expelled today on the Abu Dhabi interview. And I wish you had the transcript in front of you. I have it in the dressing room in my briefcase. I wish I'd brought it. I assumed you'd be better briefed. I was expelled based on the Abu Dhabi interview. The transcript makes it abundantly clear. I did not, have never called on anyone to attack British troops, and I have never called on British troops to disobey orders, only illegal orders. Eric Joyce appears to agree with me on that point. But this is all a big diversion. The war is a disaster. Mr Blair has dragged our country into a foreign policy disaster, and they would like to divert attention away from the disaster into this squabble here. Tell me, uh, George Gary, let's move on now to what you do uh, now. Uh, why are you reluctant to say whether or not you will force a by-election? Well, I was only expelled a few hours ago. Give me a chance. you're always a man with a plan. I'm uh, going to my constituency on Saturday. I'll be having my surgery there as normal. I'll be talking to my constituents. I'll be talking to my comrades who have sustained me over nearly 20 years in Labour politics in Glasgow, and I'll give you a better idea of what I'm doing after that. So would you like to see about George uh, fight a by-election for his seat? Well, you know, that's a matter for George. Uh, at root, the, the Labour Party I has standards. I think that's a no. <laughs> I think the Labour that's Party no has question. standards, and George has disappointed many by stepping way outside what we'd consider, most people would consider to be reasonable and acceptable from a Labour MP. And frankly, those standards come first, and what George chooses to do next, in his own personal interest, yeah. You know, is second. But 139 Labour MPs voted against mm. the war in Iraq. I mean, what about the right of free speech and all this? Well, that's, that's exactly the point. 139 Labour MPs did vote against the war in Iraq. Um, George is the only one where any action has been taken, and it's quite clear that it's nothing to do with this position on Iraq. But, 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 it's a position on British troops and calling on foreign troops to fight against British troops. That's the size of it. George wants to convince us all it's to do with this position in Iraq, that he's some kind of martyr. It's simply not true. Do you actually think that being a martyr is probably quite a good position for you to be in? I don't want to be a martyr. I spent uh, 36 years in the Labour Party, considerably longer than Major Joyce, who's a, a, rel a relatively recent parachute in. Uh, I spent the best years of my life in the Labour Party and I wanted to stay in it. I didn't want to be a martyr. But I'll tell you this, I'm now in a parliamentary party of one, but I have millions of supporters in the country. And when George Bush comes to town next month, 
Mr. Blair's latest wizard wheeze to bring George Bush to London for three days. You'll see the kind of support that we have. While Mr. Joyce could get a meeting of his supporters in a telephone box, we'll fill all of central London with hundreds of thousands of people against George Bush and Tony Blair. Eric Joyce, do you think eh, that it would have been different had George Galloway actually actively called for Saddam to be toppled? No, I don't. I mean, I, from my own point of view, and I think many people within the Labour Party, and the members and, and members of Parliament, George called for foreign soldiers uh, and mercenaries to that? fight That's against the British untrue. troops. It's entirely clear. And he reiterated that on programmes like the Lesserick programme that we've seen already. That is what sickened many people, including me. Well, just on the final point then, did you wish Iraqi people to resist the well, coalition the forces? The Iraqi people have every right to resist a foreign invasion of their country. And you know what? And how They're do not you resist it? Do you know what? They're not listening to Newsnight for their cue on that. As soon as the foreign forces invaded their country, they fought them, just as we would have fought foreign forces invading our country. So but they were right to do so? It's their right to do so. It's their right to do so. And it's incontestable, legally, morally, in every other respect, their right to resist foreign occupation. That's my view. It's the view of millions. Thank you both very much indeed.